guys, how's it going? So today I'm gonna to be working with some succulents. It's been quite a long time since I've done this. Um, so I'm really looking forward to it. In fact, this was the very last arrangement that I put together with succulents. It's been about four months ago. I thought you guys might like to see an update on how it's doing. And it's kind of a testament to how succulents do when you pack them in really close. And I get asked that question a lot, like how are those succulents gonna grow or they're gonna outgrow their container so fast that you're gonna to have to be pulling plants out right and left. If you plant them close like this, they just tend to not put on as much growth as fast. And you can just see that they've all done really, really well. This one has been outside since I planted it and it went through a hailstorm. So there's a little tiny bit of hail damage and it's been in quite a lot of sun too. It just recently turned hot, so I do need to find a spot that gets a little bit more protection in the afternoon. But because it was in that sun in the springtime, um, which isn't as intense as it is now, the aloe colored up beautifully. The calancho is blooming for the second time, but I am noticing a tiny bit of burn on the end of the calancho leaves, so I will move this to a more protected spot. But everything's doing great. I'm super happy with it. Today though, I wanna specifically show you how I create height in a succulent arrangement. Because I get asked that question quite a lot when I use a low bowl like this. Sometimes I'll have a plant in the center that's a pretty short plant like this one, but it'll appear way higher than the edge of the rim of the bowl. So I just thought I would show you how I build something like that and um, how I water it and take care of it. So first off, I have this low bowl right here that's from MPG Planters. They actually contacted me a while ago um, and I told them that they need to make more low bowls for succulents because I have a hard time finding them. So like a year and a half later, they sent me this bowl. This is actually a set of three. This is the smallest of the three. Um, so I was really excited about this. It has a very traditional um, look to it which I like. And I can't remember what the name of it is, but we will link it down below. Now, the one thing about this is it does not have a drainage hole. So I'm gonna create one because that's very important, especially if you're a beginner with succulents, you must have a drainage hole because they like to not have water around their roots for very long. So what I'm gonna do, you can see on the bottom, it already kind of has a spot started. Um, that's where I'm gonna put my hole. I've got a drill with a diamond tile drill bit. You could probably use a regular drill bit um, since this is pretty porous and I don't think it's like a very hard material, but to be on the safe side, diamond tile does a really good job. So I'm just gonna um, put a hole in this real quick. my word got it done so for this size of container one drainage hole is plenty if you have a really big one like for the biggest size bowl that comes in this set I would probably put three drainage holes in it just to be safe um, and now I'm gonna grab my soil here let me set the drill down and I'm using a Spoma cactus mix for this arrangement which I use with all of my cactus and succulent arrangements that's what I use in this one thank you So I like to start off with quite a bit of soil because we are gonna create a mound in the end anyway. We can add or subtract soil as we go as well. I think why it seems hard to create height in your succulent arrangement is because when you take a succulent out of its container like this one right here, the roots are pointed down. So most of us, especially those of you who are maybe you know dabbling in succulents for the first time, it makes you think that that's how you need to plant it with the roots facing down like that. But that's not necessarily the case. Succulents are so incredibly forgiving. Um, as long as they have a little bit of soil or a little bit of sphagnum moss around their roots, they are just great. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove some of this soil from around, this is a Sempervivum called Sempervivum calcareum. We're gonna remove some of the soil. And then this is a term that I, when I was very first starting to learn about how to put succulents together, I was watching one of Deborah Lee Baldwin's videos um, and she works with succulents a lot, but she was creating a, an arrangement kind of like this. And she said that she likes to tip her succulents and rest their chins on the side of the container. And that's how she kind of builds up her arrangement. So the next chin of the next succulent will be resting on the other one. And that kind of stuck with me. So that's kind of what we're gonna do. And we're gonna start building from the, uh, the lower level all the way up to the top of the mound. I don't really like how this one's setting though. This one has a whole bunch of babies around the outside. I'm gonna remove some of these real quick. I think it'll uh, make it rest better on the side. And a lot, I think, of succulent arranging is just kind of trying it, maybe tearing it apart a couple of times, trying it again, until you get it to look the way you want it to look. And there's nothing wrong doing that. Sometimes I'll have put together an arrangement 
and like a week later I'll tear the whole thing apart because I don't really love how it turned out. But see how I'm resting the succulent right on the side and I'm pointing it outward? Um, that's what gives you the really pretty interest and like if you had this in like a table centerpiece sort of setting, whoever's sitting, you know, on either side of this will have a lot of beautiful things to look at as opposed to if it was like this way not as interesting because you can't really see the detail. Okay, so this one right here is a Crassula and I think I'm just gonna place a couple more succulents so you can kind of see them go together and then we'll time lapse the rest because it kind of, you know, you build the same way all the way around. So see how you can kind of squeeze them together like this? That's how I created this one right here. You can create a very close knit relationship between your succulents and they will just do great. And I'm like that, I really like that color on that one. Okay, then I think we'll do this as an Echeveria Neon Breakers. And I always like to go through as well and pick off any damaged or dead looking leaves because how succulents grow is usually from the center. Um, and then the lower leaves or the older leaves will start to uh, dry up and you can pull those off. That's totally normal of succulents. There we go. So I'm gonna do my whole first ring and then when I get ready to place my next set of succulents, we'll stop and I'll show you. Okay, so I've got pretty much my first ring of succulents in and you can already see the mound kind of start to take shape. And the way I think you can do that really easily is when you get succulents, oh, I have it right here, like this right here that have a lot of babies, you can take the babies off and tuck them around in little cracks and um, little openings that you may have and it makes them very easy to maneuver. Um, so now I'm gonna start kind of my second ring and I've got a nice big kind of gap right here that I'm gonna use this Echeveria to fill. Um, so I'm gonna take the babies off first and then I'll clean it up and remove some of the soil. Then we'll place it. All right, so now since I have removed most of the soil and I'm not left with anything really firm, I'm gonna go ahead and grab a little bit more of my potting mix here, my cactus mix, and build up just a little bit more of a mound. Oh, I think that's perfect right there. And then I just pack soil in around the roots until I like the placement. And see how they just rest on one another like that? It's perfect. Now, so for my next one here, I have a sedum with a nice little root ball. So I'll create a little hole. And this one's got a little height too. So it kind of helps me out a bit. And this type of succulent really fills in gaps nicely. And then I'll take a little more potting soil. Let me turn it around so you can see the root ball. So see the root ball kind of sitting up like that? I'm gonna take a little bit more potting soil and just pack it in around that root ball so we're not left with much air. So that's what I'm gonna continue doing basically until I'm done with the arrangement. I imagine I will get one small ring of succulents here and then I'll be left with one hole in the center that I'll pop you know, something with maybe a little height and color in. So I think it may actually be helpful to see a succulent go in from this angle right here. Let me find one that I like for this area. Yeah, put this little agave in there. So this one has some really nice height, so I'm actually creating a little bit of a well for its roots here. We'll see how it fits. And then we backfill that hole a little bit. And let me turn it around and show you. Look how perfect that is. Fits that section beautifully. So I think that this is a sun sparkler sedum right here. It's got some beautiful color. So I'm trying to decide if I add two more small agave or if I add a little bit of color into the center. I think I'm gonna do this and I might be able to fit one more agave in there. Oh yeah, that's pretty. Let me turn it around so you can see what it's shaping up to look like up there. Isn't that so pretty? The colors of all of these are just beautiful. And I think I can fit an agave right in back here. Turn it back around. This is where it gets a little dicey. Gotta take it a little slower so that I don't get all the rest of the succulents dirty. And now clearly none of these succulents are meant to stay this small forever. Um, but when you plant them in close quarters, like I said, it just slows their growth rate down so dramatically that I can tend to usually get about a year out of an arrangement like this before I need to take it apart and do a little bit of repotting. I might have to do some normal grooming, routine maintenance grooming, um, and maybe pop a sedum out here or there, um, but nothing major for about a year, which is pretty amazing. Okay, we got room for one more. I think another sedum, a little bit of more uh, purple. 
I think I'm just gonna use a bunch of these little babies that I popped off earlier to fill in this last little gap, which means I'll use a little bit of soil to raise it up so that the roots make contact. And that's the most important part. You just wanna make sure that all their root balls have as much soil around them as possible and that they are making contact with soil. Um, that way they have something to root into. Like these little babies right here will definitely root as long as that stem is put into soil. Okay, I think it's done. So let me clean off the table and then I'm gonna run and grab my syringe so I can show you how to water this. Okay, so now that it's done, I did wanna show you how to water it really quick, like how I find the best success and the easiest way to water, especially with a mounted arrangement like this. You wouldn't wanna come at it with a hose with high pressure or a watering can with high pressure um, because you know nothing's rooted in yet. And so there is loose soil inside this arrangement and it will want to run out until those plants have a chance to root in. So I find having just a large syringe, these are really inexpensive to buy and so handy to have for succulents especially things like this. Um, it's just nice because you can direct the water right where you want it to go and you can control the flow. So basically what I do is I just kind of shoot the water in toward the root balls of the plant slowly. And I just go all the way around the arrangement and do that. Of course, you know, once they root in, it gets a lot easier to water. And if you've got it outside, you can just water it overhead um, at that point. But for the first little bit, you wanna treat them kind of ginger so that you don't have a mess on your hands. See how easy that is? And they need so little water that it's just a really easy arrangement to keep happy. So anyway, that's how you create a succulent arrangement with a little bit of height in the center. And of course you could plant traditionally and plant them all flat with the roots going straight down and just use some higher succulents in the center. But I think this creates a really unique look and I love that the succulents are tipped and they're looking at you, especially for like a dinner kind of table centerpiece situation. You don't want anything too tall to where you can't see everybody at the table, but you still want something that's got interest all the way around. So anyway, I thought you guys might enjoy seeing this um, and I hope that you're uh, ready to see some more succulent arrangements because I just went and kind of loaded up the car and went to town buying succulents because I was just in the mood for it. So anyway, we will see you in the next video. Bye.